I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. What I want to do uh, in this teaching today, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him. I want to continue uh, since the tribulation has started and it started once Obama had completed his term as the illegal president, and America then became a rogue nation. Now, please listen to me very carefully today. America became a rogue nation. America became an unconstitutional nation. Obama's assignment from the devil, from Satan, was to, if you will, dethrone Jesus by taking away the power of the word of God. I've never in all the years I've lived, and I've lived a goodly number of them, I've seen a lot of foolish things. I've, I've seen a lot of fools. But I had never seen anybody actually laugh at the scriptures and poke fun at the scriptures. I had never seen that till, I, till Obama did it regarding uh, the dietary laws, which seafood can be eaten and cannot be eaten. And regarding the Sermon on the Mount, he put, Obama took particular uh, joy in upstaging the Sermon on the Mount and giving the generals of our army or air army uh, a state of confusion if they followed Jesus. He said they wouldn't know what to do. They'd be confused following Jesus regarding the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount. And during that period that Obama was once he finished his illegal presidency and dethroned and took away the power of the word of God from all Americans, black or white, Catholics, Jewish, no matter what, it was gone, the authority of the word of God. And I don't want to cry Elijah here, but I and I alone am left teaching the Old Testament and the New Testament and the power of God's word and his singular purpose of righteousness, not Catholicism, not Judaism, not Baptist, not Methodist, not Presbyterian, not Orthodox, not Pentecostal, not Evangelical. Righteousness is the one purpose and the one call of God. Righteousness, and if you check your Bible, you will find righteousness throughout in nearly on every page of the Bible, but you will not find Catholicism. You will not find Judaism. You will not find Baptist, but you will find righteousness on every nearly every page of the Bible. And then every book is in there multitudinous times. Righteousness. Now, please make a note of that. Please make a note of that. That's all we have left. Obama, de Obama dethroned the word of God in the hearts of America, and he dethroned also at the same time the Constitution. But you listen to Pastor Manning, because I'm going to tell you that the door to salvation has been closed. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 7, verse 14. Make a note of that. Write it down. Where God closed the door to salvation in Genesis chapter 7, verse 14. I'm going to take you there in just a moment. But righteousness is the one theme, the one thread that runs from Genesis to Revelation. It's in every book. It's probably on every page of the Bible. Righteousness, not Catholicism. Not Judaism, not evangelical, not Pentecostal, righteousness. That's what I preach. That's what I preach. And if you're not preaching it, you're not preaching righteousness. You're, you're preaching wickedness. There's only, there's only two options. One is wickedness, the other is righteousness. If you're not preaching righteousness, now listen to me very carefully. If you're not preaching righteousness, then you're preaching wickedness. If you're not preaching righteousness, prosperity is not a sermon. <laughs> Healing is not a sermon. These are not sermons. The only sermon to preach is righteousness. Righteousness. So I want to be able to share that. And so now this tribulation got started 
with Donald John's trip, Trump election to the presidency. I'll go back over the presidencies of the elections, the illegal, how the devil stepped in, because he really wasn't concerned about Kennedy, about Eisenhower, about Reagan, and about Bush, or even about Clinton. He wasn't really concerned about, but at the time that he realized that what I was doing here in Harlem, I started a movement called No Do No Rain. At that time, the devil sent Obama. Now, you don't have to believe anything I say. You, you don't ever have to believe in anything I say. In fact, you don't ever have to log on again. But you're, I'm teaching God's word. I'm the preacher of righteousness. You're listening. Please listen because it's very important. You may be outside of the reach you may be outside of salvation. You may be unsaved at this moment. And I'm going to tell you that the door to salvation has been closed. So listen to me very carefully. Don't get an attitude. Don't, don't go zooey on me. Just listen. You may be saved or you may not be. Just listen to me. I didn't pass a judgment, and I'm not going to pass a judgment on your salvation. I'm going to just tell you that the door of salvation, I'm going to teach about the door of salvation, it opens and it closes. I'm not passing judgment on you uh, or your friends or anybody that you know. What I've said to you about righteousness is true. It's on every page of the Bible, not Catholicism, not Judaism, not Islam. Not Buddhism, not Hinduism, not Baptist, not Methodist. But righteousness is on the page, on every page of the Bible. Righteousness, that's what I preach. And you look at me cross-eyed. What's wrong with him? Why don't he get down with all the other preachers? Why don't he preach prosperity? Why don't he preach healing? Why don't he run with Al Sharpton? Why didn't he run with Donald Trump? Righteousness is the reason why I don't. Righteousness, and they don't preach righteousness. Not one of them. Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, not one of them. Billy Graham, they don't preach righteousness. Righteousness. So listen to me very carefully. I'm not going to pass judgment. I'm going to I'm going to tell you about the door of salvation. But you know of yourself, you you never thought about it because sometimes, well, not sometimes, but church going people can be so deeply marred in sin that it never crossed their minds to think about the fact that righteousness is on every, nearly, on nearly every page of the Bible, you'll find the word righteousness. Nearly every page of the Bible. Didn't say every page, but nearly every page of the Bible, you can find righteousness. But church people are so marred in tradition. They're so marred in socialism. They're so marred in culture and racism. They're so marred in their habits and denominationalism, they don't even notice righteousness. I had a woman join this church. I preached at another pastor's church, and I preached righteousness at that church 40 years ago. She came right over and joined this church. She said, I'd never heard that before, and I've been in church all my life. She said, righteousness. Now, that's the truth. I'm getting ready to give you another truth. That's, that's the first truth. I gave you the truth that Obama dethroned the word of God in the hearts of men and women, black, white, red, Jew, Catholic. Obama dethroned and laughed. I've never in the history of the world ever heard anybody laughing, not even the devil, laugh at the word of God, thought the word of God was a joke. Obama did. And the church laughed with them. And all the black pastors invited this, this laughing devil, Obama the laughing devil, all the pastors, all the black pastors invited this laughing devil to come and stand in their pulpits. This laughing devil that laughed at the word of God. This laughing devil that laughed at the word of God. This laughing devil that laughed at the word of God. All the pastors invited him to come and stand in their pulpits. I'm not going to pass judgment on you. I'm simply telling you that the door of salvation is closed. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that God said it. I'm not going to even pronounce it myself. I'm not passing judgment on you. But here, so that's the first truth. The second truth is that the tribulation started at the end of Obama's reign as the son of Satan. The, the tribulation began under Donald John Trump, who, was, who God has named as the servant of Satan and the trigger of the tribulation. 
There's never been in the history of America the kind of chaos. Of, of, of Donald John Tribulation Trump has brought a constitutional issue that is no longer valid, however. And not that I don't uh, disagree with the Constitution. I love the Constitution. Wish it still had its power it had 40 years ago. We've never seen anything like Donald John Trump, the courts, a former president, etc. I'll get back to that. But he has started the tribulation. The tribulation has started in the most powerful nation on planet Earth. Save Gog, well, even America is more powerful than Gog and Magog, being China, Russia, and China. But Donald John Trump has started the tribulation. And once the tribulation began, the door to salvation was closed. Now, Mr. Engineer, if you will take me to Genesis chapter 7, I'd like to show the people something. I'm not going to tell you my opinion. I'm not going to give you my theses. I'm not going to give you my ideas. I'm simply saying to you that righteousness is found on nearly every page of the Bible. And I guarantee you, every ear that's listening to me right now had never heard that before because preachers don't preach righteousness. I don't care how big their church is, whether it's the Crystal Cathedral or whether it's the Potter's House. I can the Lakewood Church or the Catholic Church or the, the, the St. Patrick's Cathedral. I can tell you now, people, your the ears that are hearing that truth that righteousness is found on nearly every page of the Bible. I didn't say every page, but nearly every page of the Bible that righteousness is found, and sometimes multitudinous times on the same page. They've never heard that before because they've never heard the truth. What they hear in these buildings they go in is wickedness. They hear wickedness, not righteousness. The preacher's not preaching righteousness. They hear wickedness, wickedness, wickedness in these pulpits, wickedness from the Christian cathedral, wickedness from the Lakewood Church, wickedness, wickedness. They never heard righteousness. The first time people listen to me now, the first time they've ever heard that, what I just said, stay tuned. That is not my thesis. That is not my idea. That is the truth of the Bible. So that we need to be clear about that. Now I want to show you that the door of salvation has been closed once Donald John Tribulation Trump, after the son of Satan, dethroned the Bible and the Constitution. There was nothing to stop Donald Trump. Nobody in their right mind would have ever thought Donald Trump became president. Not even Donald Trump. But after Obama dethroned the Constitution and the Bible, listen to me, don't get an attitude, don't be defiant, listen to this truth. The door, of the, trip, the door to salvation has been closed. The door to salvation has been closed. Mr. Engineer, bring me to Genesis chapter 7, verse 14. And, um, well, actually, I'll bring me to Genesis chapter 7. Let me, read the, um, let me read the entire chapter. I need to set the stage here for what needs to be said here. Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 7 reads such. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me, in this generation of every clean beast, thou shalt take to, uh, take to thee by sevens. And uh, the male and his female, uh, and of the beasts that are not clean, by two. And the male and his female. Now the scripture will be open up to you today. Of fowls also of the air by sevens. Uh, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Now we're saying to you, the door to salvation has been closed. And this is God talking to Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness. For yet seven days, I will cause it to rain upon the earth. 40 days and 40 nights. So 47 days before it began to rain, 47 days before it began, I'm sorry, 
Seven days, pardon me, seven days before it began to rain. Noah took sevens by sevens, male and female, and two by two of the unclean beasts upon the ark. And every living substance that I have made, I will destroy. This is God talking. The one that Obama laughed at, laughed, Obama the laughing devil, Obama the laughing devil, Obama the laughing devil laughed at the word of God. Obama the laughing devil laughed at the word of God. Obama the laughing devil laughed at the word of God. But this is God talking. I'm telling you now the door to salvation was closed the day Donald Trump put his hand on the Bible. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. This is what God said. This is what God, not, not what the Baptist said, not what Billy Graham says. God says, I will destroy everything from off the face of the earth. That's God said. That's what God said. Verse five, and Noah did according the sevens by sevens of female and female and male unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts and beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Then went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the floods were upon the earth. And in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the seventh day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. That's where God sends his blessings uh, when you tie out of the windows of heaven. Verse 12, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And in the self same day entered Noah and Shem, that's the father of the Jewish nation, Ham, father of the so-called black people or African people, or people with dark skin and nappy hair. And that's not pejorative or ugly. It is who Ham is, he's the father. And Japheth, the father of the Gentile or white people, the sons of Noah. And his wives, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons uh, with them into the ark. And every beast, every beast that after its kind, and all the cattle after its kind, and every creeping thing after its kind, and the fowl after its kind, and every bird went in. Continue reading, Mr. Rowling. And they went in unto Noah and to two by two of all flesh. And they that went in, went in male and female. And as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now that's where I want to get to. Right there, Miss India. Stop right there. Verse 16. The Lord shut him in. In other words, God closed the door. And probably some of the King James Version Bible, uh, it will say God shut the door. But it says in this tra translation, God shut him in. In other words, God shut the door, the door to salvation, which was upon the ark. Everybody was on all the, all the male and female of the unclean by two, all the male and female and of the clean beast by seven, everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth, Noah, his sons, his wives, Noah's wife, they were all on the ark of salvation. And then God and the Lord shut him in and the Lord shut the door. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Now, I want to say to all of you, 
that the door to salvation has been shut. The door to salvation has been shut. When Donald John Tripp, after Obama, the laughing devil, after Obama, the laughing devil laughed at the Bible and the churches invited him to come and speak. The universities invited him to come and speak. The media invited him after he laughed at the Bible. He laughed at the word of God before he took illegally the presidency. He laughed at the word of God. He laughed at Jesus. He laughed. Obama laughed at Jesus. Obama, if you will, chide. Obama rebuked Jesus. Let me put it that way. And preachers invited the laughing devil, Obama, into their churches. And black people were having conniptions, having orgasms with their clothes on. Every time they saw Obama walk across the stage, they were having orgasm with their clothes on. At the man who rebuked Jesus. For Obama said of the sermon that is so precious in the sight of God, of the Sermon on the Mount, of the Sermon on the Mount, Obama said the generals wouldn't know what to do with that message of, of the Sermon on the Mount. Ha, ha, ha. And the preachers invited this laughing devil into their pulpits and women were having orgasms in their clothes, wetting themselves when they saw him walk across the stage. They were wet themselves. They worshiped this laughing devil. They worshiped him. They wet themselves looking at this laughing devil called Obama that laughed at the scriptures. Ha, ha, ha. Talk about we can't eat shellfish. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> he laughed, and the preachers couldn't get enough of him. That just shows you anybody who's ever been anywhere near God would never touch anybody, would never let Obama come into their house. But moreover, he could not be and was not, and he was never the president of the United States of America. We'll get, we'll talk, we'll teach more about that. But imagine this, Elder Noah Ramos. Imagine this, Elder Noah, since we're preaching about you today. Imagine this, Elder Noah. Imagine this, that Obama laughed at the Bible, rebuked Jesus, laughed at the Sermon on the Mount, and every preacher knew it. They know what he said. He laughed before he stole the election. He laughed at the Bible. And yet, black preachers, white preachers, Jewish preachers invited him to come to their pulpits or to their sanctuary. And nobody turned him down. After he, after he rebuked Jesus, laughed at Elder Noah, and I had to stand back as a man of God and look at America go crazy as hell. I had to stand back all alone, all by myself, being called a false prophet. I had to stand back all by myself and watch Obama walk into these cathedrals, into these mosques, walk into the, I don't know if he actually went into a mosque, into these temples, into these churches and preach, and they would cheer him. And I'm saying, but he laughed at the scriptures. He laughed at the Bible, I would say. He laughed. He laughed at the Bible, and yet you let him come and preach. He dethroned the authority of the word of God. I had to stand by all those years by myself, all alone. That's when the Lord told me to trust in him. 16, 17 years ago now, God told me to trust in him. These people are blind. These people are blind. And the women were having orgasm, wetting between their legs when they saw him walk across the stage. They were wetting themselves at this devil, at this devil. But huh, then came the prophecy. Then came the fulfillment of the prophecy that the tribulation had begun. And then came tribulation Trump, for the tribulation had begun. And so as you saw me read there that God shut the door. God Almighty shut the door. Now I want to ask the engineer, and I want to tell you, in other words, when Genesis chapter 7 verse 16 said God shut him in, 
Actually, God, it was God that shut the door. Nobody else could get in. Nobody else could get in. The door of salvation was shut. And God said of his own, out of his own mouth, I'm going to destroy everything on planet Earth. That's the first time he did it. Now, Jesus prophesied 2,000 years ago that God's going to do the same thing. It's called the tribulation this time, not the flood. It's called the tribulation. And it began with Donald John Tribulation Trump. Now, those of you who are taking a stand to disbelieve, those who have taken a stand to throw stones at me, those of you who have taken those stands, those positions to disbelieve, to throw stones at me, well, you're hearing the truth. You're sto throwing stones because you're sinful. You're throwing stones because you are wicked. And you have associated yourself with denominations, with races, and with groups that only preach wickedness. There are only two things to be preached in the world, either righteousness or wickedness. There's only one or two things. Either you're going to preach righteousness, you're going to live righteous, or you're going to preach wickedness, and you're going to live wicked. Only two. There's no in-between. You're either the preacher's preaching righteousness or he's preaching wickedness. One of the two. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and God put him on the ark of salvation and then shut the door and destroyed everybody else. You've never heard that before, have you? No, because the devil would never tell you that. The devil would never tell you that the word righteousness is on nearly every page of the Bible, probably or nearly in every chapter of every page of every book of the Bible. Righteousness. That's what God wants you to hear. That's what God wants you to hear. God wants you to hear righteousness. And Obama laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Obama laughed. And the women wet their panties. And the men did too. They started salvating all, all their orifices. Their orifices started salva salvating when the men's, all their orifices began to salvate when they saw Obama walk across the stage. When they saw Obama walk across the stage, all their orifices began to salivate. That's the word, salivate. Righteousness. 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 So the door to salvation has been closed. It was closed when Donald John Trump became the president, the trigger of the, the trigger of the tribulation, and we're in it right now. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean this, just like when the flood began, seven days before the flood began, God told Noah to get on the ark. He had to sit there seven days before the rain started. In eight years... Before, before, before tribulation, Trump took the helm of the presidency. Actually, it was seven years that the tribulation began in November when tribulation Trump illegally took the illegal constitutional place of the of, of presidency of the United States of America. So when if you heard me, saw me, uh, read with me, I'm not giving you my opinion. I've not given you my ideas. I've not given you my theses. I've not given you my theology. I've given you the stomp down, flat out word of God. God shut the door. God said, I will destroy it. God said, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. I didn't say that. I'm repeating what God said. Thus saith the Lord. God said, I will destroy everything else. That is, if you're not on the ark, you're going to get destroyed. If you're not on the ark, God closed the door to the ark of salvation. And God closed the door at the advent of, of um, actually the advent of both Barack Hussein, the long legged Mac Daddy, Obama, and Donald John, Tribulation Trump. God closed the door. Now, so salvation is not possible now. The tribulation has begun and salvation is not possible. It is not possible. If you weren't saved prior to that, you're not saved. You can't get saved now. The door to salvation is closed. I want to say this as well, is that the, uh, there, there, there are probably a number of people who may even think they're saved that they're not because 
They think that they got saved, but the church they got saved there was a church of wickedness. It didn't preach righteousness. So you can't get saved in a church that preaches wickedness. Now you can argue with me, you can get angry with me, you can throw pots and pans at me. I will pray for you, but you can't get saved in a church that does not preach righteousness. You can, and it's, it's, there's only two sermons in the world. There's only two sermons in the world. It's either righteousness or wickedness. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's only two sermons in the world. There's only two sermons. There's only two sermons. There's God and there's the devil. And that's it. There is no in between. There's either God or there's the devil. There is no in between. There's only two sermons. Either this preacher is preaching righteousness or he's preaching wickedness. Either one of the two, but there's no in between. So if you so-called got saved in a church that preaches wickedness, then you too aren't saved. And God's going to destroy you. That's what the word of God says. Let me, let me, so the door of the salvation has been closed. Mr. Engineer, would you bring up Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25? I'm going to let Jesus tell you that the door, not only is Jesus going to close the door, but he's going to identify you as being a member of the church of wickedness. He's going to tell you, I don't even know you. You, you never even crossed my mind. You never even, you've never been anywhere near. Jesus is going to tell you, he's going to tell you, I don't know you. What are you knocking on my door for? I don't know you. I don't know you. You've never, come, you've never come to the church of righteousness. I don't know you. I don't know you. You never come to the church of righteousness. I don't know you. Jesus is going to say it. Let's read. Jesus says it like this. He says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. And five were foolish. They that were fools or foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the fools or the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. 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 And that's that. Okay, there's more. Afterwards came also the fools. Afterward, they all came running from Lakewood Church. They all came running from the Potter's House. They all came running from the Crystal Cathedral. They all came running from Temple Emmanuel. They all came running from the Church of God in Christ. They all came running from the Apostolic Faith. They all came running from the First Baptist of Dallas. They all came running from the Evangelicals. They all came running. They all came running. They all came. They all came saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. That's it. Not my ideas, not my thesis, not my theology, not my denominationalism, not my tradition. The word of God. The door was shut. In other words, the door to salvation, Jesus said, will be shut. 
when the bridegroom cometh, and in this case, when the tribulation cometh, the door to salvation, and if you're not saved, you can't get saved. The door will be shut. And just because, just because, as an aside here, as an aside, just because you've been hanging out with the wise, <laughs> don't mean that you're saved. <laughs> don't mean you got oil in your lamps. Just because you've been hanging out, just because you've been around the wise, don't mean that you're saved. <laughs> Jesus said, I don't know you, though you had an opportunity of salvation. But just because you've been hanging out in Lakewood Church, or just because you've been hanging out in the potter's house, don't mean that you're saved. I wouldn't say there's anybody wise, however. Let me refrain that. Uh, but many people would think, well, just because I've been going to a church, I'm saved. You can't get saved in a church that preaches wickedness. And if the church isn't preaching righteousness, the case is closed. Now, here's what I want to uh, impart to you today. As much as you would think that you have all the time in the world to get saved, or you under some idea theologically denominationally that God would take you no matter when, that God would take you at the last minute, that God would never shut the door, that the door to God is always open, that it doesn't matter when or where or how, uh, that at the last minute of your life on your dying bed, all you got to say is save me, Lord, and you're good to go. All you got on all your life, you've lived a wicked life. You've lied, stolen, whoremongered, thief, flatback. You've done everything you could possibly do. Backstabbed, and now you're on your dying bed. Your cancer's riddling your body. You're withering away, and now you figure, well, now's a good time to say to God, who has watched you live like that, watch you lie, watch you hate, watch you steal. Watch you do all those wicked things. Watch you throw stones at Pastor Manning. Watch you uh, refuse to help him when the devil and the LGBTQ came after him, when the pinch-nosed Negroes came after him, when the media came after him, when the Mellon Bank came after him, when the city of New York, and he asked you to help, and you turned the deaf ear and cursed him. And now, now you think that you are fit. Now you think you are worthy to say, Save me, Lord, I'm a sinner. Huh, you a joke? <laughs> you think God is a joke? Oh, that's you. You Obama. Oh, that's who you are. Obama thinks God is a joke. You think after doing all of that, you think after living all that wicked life, you think about li after living like that, that all you got to do on your dying bed is just say, save me, Lord, and you're good to go. You get a seat in heaven like everybody else. You, you, you think God is a fool. You think God's a fool? You think God is a fool that he's just going to let you do all those things and now, now that you're dying, and probably the only reason why you're calling on him for salvation is you're dying. If you had your health and strength and could get up and run, you still wouldn't call on him. You think you can play God like three-card Monty? You, you churches, you Billy Graham think you can play God like a three-card Monty <laughs> because all you got to do your last day is just say, save me, Lord, and it's good to go. And you wouldn't be doing that if you weren't in trouble. The door is shut, and he doesn't know you. He doesn't know you. You're not saved. You're on your way to hell. He'll see you in a thousand years. At the second resurrection, he'll see you at the second resurrection. But you're going to hell. You're going to hell right there from the altar of the Lakewood Church. You're going to hell right from the Church of God in Christ conference. You're going to hell from their annual meeting. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. And you're going to spend a thousand years at the second resurrection, you will be raised up, and then you, death, and hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. The door to salvation has been closed. So you don't like the rights, you like the prosperity preachers. You like the preachers that preach about 
uh, money and health and good times and racism. That's what you like? <laughs> I see. And you hate the righteousness. You hate the word that's on nearly every page on, in nearly every chapter of the Bible. The word righteousness is on nearly every page and in nearly every chapter of the Bible. Righteousness. And that you see, that's what you don't want to hear. Is that what you said? <laughs> you know, oh, that pastor preacher. I don't know why he don't get out with the other. I don't know why he don't hang out with Al Sharpton. I don't know why he's uh, uh, low rating uh, T.D. Jakes. I, I don't know why he talks about uh, 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 Joel Osteen as the devil. Actually, I called Obama the laughing devil. Actually, Joel Osteen is laughing devil number two. I got a name for him right now. M write that down. Joel Osteen is laughing devil number two. He's a laughing devil. He's laughing devil number two. Yes, that's right. So now, Jesus said that a time will come when the door is shut and you can knock on it, but you ain't coming in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Go back tomorrow night and try it again. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, uh, try it again. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Come back tomorrow night and try it again. I hear you knocking and you can't come in. That's right. That's right. So when Donald John Trump took the helm, the door was closed. Now, I will talk to you more about the power to bind and to loose that God gives to his servant. There are those of us that are saved. We are not known as the elect. The tribulation brings in a group of the righteous known as the elect. They have been elected to survive the tribulation, to reign and rule with Christ for 1,000 years. Let's say, for instance, right now you've heard this message and you've been listening to me preach, let's say, six months, seven months, seven years, right? And you still, after hearing this message, and know potentially you might not be saved. You know, you, you might think that you are, but you know your church ain't up to par. You know it's a house of wickedness. You can hardly go in there yourself. You know how wicked it is. You know how wicked the people are. So you might, be, you might be wise enough to say, you know, I might not be saved. Pastor Manny might be right. You might be wise enough to say that. You, you might be wise enough to actually not reject me and, 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 and rather to uh, but say, Pastor Manning might be, he's teaching the word of God. I mean, God did destroy everybody in the flood. God did shut the door. He's not making it up. Pastor Manning's not making it up. Jesus did say that the five fools couldn't get in. And he shut the door. And the pastor man's not making so I, maybe I'm one of the five fools. You might be. What are you gonna do from this point on? You're gonna go back to that same old Sunday day church. You're gonna go right back there on Sunday morning to the same old play. You ain't gonna you, you're not gonna you're not gonna ask for the opportunity. You're not what? You, you're gonna just reject all of this? You're gonna reject it? And go right back after hearing the truth out of Noah's mouth, out of God's mouth. The parable of Jesus and the bridegroom, after hearing that truth, you're going to still go back to that barn and that preacher, that preacher's right. Oh, I don't care, you know, how big his jet plane is, or how he lives in a $10 million house. You're going to go right back there after hearing this. Or rather, are you going to say, I need to see if I can seek out Pastor Manning. Maybe Pastor Manning can do something for me since he's the Lord's servant. No point in me spending my time in that barn with Joel Osteen. No point in me spending my time with the evangelicals. I need to seek out, I need to humble myself, get down on my knees, humble myself. Things I've said, how I've rejected that man. The way I've rejected him. After he's brought me the truth, and I and he asked to help fight the Mellon Bank, to help fight the city of New York, help fight the LGBTQ, and I rejected him. Does what go around come around? And by that I mean, 
Am I now being rejected the same way I rejected him when he came to me and he asked me to help him? When he came day by day on the broadcast, asked me to tithe, asked me to give the first fruit offering, asked me to support the ministry. Day by day, he asked me every day he asked me and I rejected him every day. Does what go around come around? Does what go around come around? Does what go around come around? The way I rejected him, is that the way the Lord's going to reject me? Is that the way Almighty God has rejected me? After the Lord has reached out to you time and time again, and you rejected his servant, and now I want to be accepted, but now you're being rejected. Does what go around come around? Does, are you now hearing a message that you have been rejected? This engineer, bring up uh, Matthew's Gospel 25, verse 12. Are you hearing a message right now that says, as much as you have rejected me year out, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after you, you've rejected me, you, Pastor Manning, you've rejected me, you've rejected the messages, you've rejected my crime, my plea for help, you've rejected, you've rejected, you've rejected in and out of hand. Are you now being rejected? Mr. Engineer, bring up verse 12. There you go. Here's what the Lord's going to say to you on your dying bed. Here's what the Lord's going to say to you as you approach the gates of hell. And you say, no, Lord, I don't want to go in this place. I don't want to go in. I don't want to die in this place. I don't want to go in that. I see the gates of hell. I can see them opening up now. Lord, I don't want to go in. Can you save me? Don't let me fall into the gate of hell. Don't let me fall into the depths of hell. Don't let me fall into the lake of fire. Lord, I don't want to go in. Lord, I, I know I didn't live right. I know I, did. I know I rejected Pastor Manning. I know I threw stones at him. I, know I tried to hurt him. Lord, I don't, oh, I see the gates of hell opening up. Lord, don't, 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 Lord, 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 I don't want to go in. And here's what he's going to say to you. <laughs> I don't even know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. And through the gates you shall go. Through the gates ye shall go. That's just, that's just Bible. It's just the word of God. Don't you let that Franklin Graham, Billy Graham, and Joel Osteen, the laughing devil number two, don't you let them people tell you, all you got to do is just fall down on your knees, on your dying bed, tell the Lord you're a sinner, and you're sorry, and it's all, you're good to go. After you've done all that stuff to me, after you've done, after you have watched me fight up here in Harlem, fight this foolishness, fight this racism, fight this these LG, you watch me and you've not lifted one hand to help me. I told you early when I drove up this morning, uh, today, that people call me and said, "Yes, I'm gonna come and help you march around Columbia University." Yeah, I'm coming. I'm gonna help you, Pastor. I'm gonna help you. And they didn't come. And so after all of that, now you won't sound. The Lord has watched you reject his servant. He's asked you for help to feed the children who don't have money to feed themselves, don't have a place to stay. They're sleeping on the street. They're sleeping on the streets of New York under tents. And Pastor Manning feeds them in the morning. And Pastor Manning has asked you to help him feed the children, and you have rejected him. And yet, you want the Lord to receive you. <laughs> you want the Lord to receive you when you ask for help. You want the Lord after you refuse to help feed the children. You refuse to do it. You just flat out refuse to do it to help the children. And I'll, I'll say this as well. There are many of you who have beside you right now more than what you need. You have more than enough. And many of you have things that you have taken or you've hidden from, or you, th you thought you were hiding it from the Lord. You thought you were hiding it from the God, from the Lord. You were hiding it for yourself. You were, you were putting in a, a rainy day for yourself. Well, let me tell you something. You're going to need it. 
That what you put aside? That what you thought you could hide from God? When we asked for help financially, and you could have given enough to pay the Mellon Bank yourself, but you didn't do it. Well, let me tell you, if you put it away for if you put it aside for a rainy day, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. That cancer's gonna come. That disease is gonna come. And God's not gonna let you die, He's just gonna let you suffer and you spend money out them. You're gonna need it. You, you if you put it aside for a rainy day. Now you could have given it to the feed the children. You could have given it for the Vestals and for their edu college education. You could have said, we're going to educate the Vestals. We're going to make sure they got to play. You could, have, you, could have, you could have done all that, but say, no, I'm going to put it aside for a rainy day. Well, you're going to need it if your day, rainy day is coming. But you could have stopped the rain, or you could have been on the ark had you listened to the preacher, righteousness. Had you listened to the preacher, righteousness. Had you listened to the preacher, righteousness, you'd be on the ark. Now, let me finish by saying this. We are the elect. I am a member of the elect and the members of this congregation, those of, who are members of the elect, Sister Biswas made a note of the prophecy land over in London. Sister Biswas and others, we are members of the elect. But I've spent time today specifically letting those who are in the churches of wickedness and know that the door of salvation has been closed. And I'll say this, that there are some who are privately, who are truly, truly saved, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. They're truly saved, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. Because the job of the Holy Ghost is to lead and guide you into all truth. I speak truth. Pastor John Badalotta's son, Paul, called me Pastor Truth. There is no way you would, would keep yourself from this ministry you would hug this ministry with all your life, with everything that you have, with everything that you ever will be. You would, you would hug this ministry that, that fiercely if you had the Holy Ghost because you were hearing the truth and there's nothing. There's only truth and then there's the lie. There's only righteousness and then there's wickedness. That's it. But those of us who are members of the elect, we are good to go. Feel blessed, feel assured. You're a member of this church. You're a supporter of this ministry and church. You've given your heart. I'm your pastor. You know I'm the Lord's servant. Well, we're good to go. We will see Jesus when he comes. And like Minister Honecker said, we'll see the angels when they come. But no, we are, we are the elect. And we will reign and rule with Christ right here in Harlem. And Jesus will sleep in this building. We'll reign and rule with Christ for 1,000 years. After the first resurrection, and then the dead, those that died, those unsaved, will spend another 1,000 years while we are walking the streets of Harlem with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there'll be the second resurrection, and then there will be hell cast into the lake of fire. That's just the Bible. So, you didn't know that, did you? The word righteousness is God's sermon. That's the sermon that Jesus taught. Righteousness, righteousness. And the word righteous appears on nearly every page in your Bible and almost, almost, almost every page and almost every chapter, the word righteousness appears. Check it out and see how you've hated righteousness and you've loved wickedness. Because you can't love, you can't love righteousness and still go to wicked, the house of wickedness. The reason why you hate righteousness is because you love, love wickedness. You'll either love one and hate the other. You'll either love, either you love righteousness and you hate wickedness, which I do, or you love wickedness and you hate righteousness, which but we are the elect. Let me leave you assured that we are the elect. We are saved. <laughs>